and it's Ken Kreitzer for Cam Vets Media. We are in Boca Raton, Florida, Florida Atlantic University. Tomorrow on Saturday, 12 noon, Army Black Knights will take on Florida Atlantic, the Owls. Uh, it's going to be warm down here. It's warm now in uh, very high 80s, somewhere between 60 to 75 percent humidity. Just had a kind of a rainstorm go through second of the day. Uh, locals are pretty used to that. Doesn't seem to cool things off very much when you get a passing storm. But as Coach Munkin said, he can't control the weather. And they're the U.S. Army. The weather doesn't bother them. Uh, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle it. Um, Florida Atlantic uh, played very tough in their opener at Michigan State. Uh, in that game, losing uh, 16 to 10 and giving Michigan State a, a real battle. Army, of course, played well in its opener, 42 to 7, win over Lehigh. Uh, and uh, the offense played well, scored on every possession. They, uh, uh, when it looked like they were going to have to punt, they did a fake punt. And Andon Thomas ran it 40 yards for a first down, setting up a score. Um, Bryson Daly looked good running the offense. Um, and a lot of playmakers in his backfield uh, to work with. Uh, obviously, Kanye Udo, the sophomore. Uh, but also, Jack Rendina at fullback. A.J. Williams, Hayden Reed, who everybody remembers. Uh, Miles Stewart. And Noah Short's having a great season. He looks like he's added another speed element to his game. And uh, Samari Howard. You know, so they've got players in the backfield. The uh, question is, not having Bryson Daly run too high a percent. He ran about 25% of the time uh, last week. And uh, Kanye Udo ran uh, almost as much. I think it was two less carries. And uh, um, Noah Short had, I believe it was 10 carries, two catches. And everybody else had about, uh, about 25 runs. So, or a little, bit, a little bit over that. So it's one of the things to look at is how Bryson Daly distributes the ball. Obviously the offensive line's got his work cut out for him, but it's a veteran offensive line. Led by a sophomore, Brady Small. Well, you see him, he's got the swagger of an upperclassman already. Uh, what a great season he had as a freshman. And uh, Connor Finucane back at tackle. Uh, kind of splitting the position with Jordan Booby Law. And there's going to be a lot of splitting positions um, against Florida Atlantic. Um, uh, so one way just to handle the heat is by keeping the players moving in and out of the ball game. Uh, Paolo Generale we talked to this week and moved into the right guard position, a, a sophomore. And, of course, Lucas Scott at right tackle. Um, and... Uh, Casey Reynolds, uh, Liam Fordner, wide receivers, David Crossman, a tight end. Uh, the offense, I think, is going to be do well. The key for Army is to control the ball and to uh, have patented 12, 15 play drives. Uh, keep the defense off the field as much as possible. Try and tire out Florida Atlantic's defense. It's going to be kind of a game of attrition uh, tomorrow. Uh, Florida Atlantic. Uh, there has uh, a quarterback that can run the ball. Um, and uh, Coach Nate Woody said the key for the defense is to contain the Florida Atlantic quarterback. And so that's going to be kind of the challenge on Army defense, the up front guys. Kyle Lewis, Trey Sophia we talked to this week, Jacob Tuioti, and Cody Winokur. And Cody Harris-Miller looks like he's going to get the start. Um, Jack Latour, Dre Miller on defense. And Elo Mendozi had a great game against uh, Lehigh, uh, the young outside linebacker. So did Eric Ford, uh, two young outside linebackers. Watch for them to make plays tomorrow. Key is put pressure on the Florida line of quarterback. Has Army still got a young defensive backfield. Um, you know, led by Max D. Domenico, but Donovan Platt, Casey Larkin, Jaden Mays are young players. And if I'm Florida Atlantic, I'm going to test Army 
on pass defense. Throw it long and see if Army can stop it. Coach Nate Woody said the key is contain the quarterback and try to try to go for a sack if you can tackle the quarterback in less than two seconds. If it's if you're not getting the quarterback and it has over 2.7 seconds to throw, then you got to go back and pass defense. But uh, so that's going to be a challenge. I have a feeling this game is going to be pretty even into the first half, and then it's going to be decided by attrition in the second half. And uh, again, the key is for Army to control the ball uh, and keep their defense off the field as much as possible so they can be fresh and make the plays uh, when they need to. So it's great to be down here. And uh, as a gathering of uh, some of the West Point parents uh, tonight we're going to be at, we visited the Florida Atlantic Army ROTC program, talked to one of their up-and-coming graduates. Uh, they have about uh, 216 in the program, which is good size. And uh, actually heard the uh, Southeast Regional Commander of ROTC speak uh, to the group. Uh, very impressive. So um, we'll be back here tomorrow. We'll go out to the Association of Graduates tailgate and talk to a few of the alumni and go in and uh, capture all the pageantry of a college football in Boca Raton, or as they call it here, NIL in paradise. That's a logo on the field. It's amazing, the impact of NIL now um, and how what you do to attract players. But uh, they have a lot to offer. And uh, so great to be here. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow for coverage of Army versus Florida Atlantic, Army's first game in the American Athletic Conference. Thanks for watching. This is Ken Kratzer for Cam Vets. He did. We cover cadets, midshipmen, military, and veterans proudly since 2008. Always highlight our friends at the Special Operations Warrior Foundation just across the state in Tampa. They take care, uh, mentor, provide scholarships to families uh, uh, of a fallen Special Operations community members. Do a great job. Proud to uh, uh, represent them. So, from Boca Raton, Florida, for Canvas Media, this is Ken Kratzer. Thanks for watching.